what is going on everybody welcome back to another video today and today we're going to be talking about probably the most talked about game in the world right now and it is pow world and spoiler alert i love this game it's incredible but i'm going to go into why i like it so much things that i might dislike things that i want to see in the future and things that they're going to add in the future as well as just talk about what pow world is in general but if you like stuff like this gaming reviews gaming news gaming discussions Feel free to like and subscribe to the content if you haven't done so already, but let's get into it. So what is Power World? People call it a Pokemon clone, but there's so much more to it than that. And I don't want to get into the whole legal and all this other stuff about the copying and everything, because that's a whole other discussion for a whole other video. I just want to talk about the game as a whole and what it is. And first and foremost, this game is a survival game that blends itself that I like to, I want to say it's kind of like Pokemon meets Zelda meets Ark Survival, at least in my eyes. You capture pal similar to how you might do in a Pokemon game, utilizing a special ball, add them to your party and your pal deck list. From there, you can use captured pals to help create more capture more as well as use them as workers on your home base factory where they can produce resources automatically craft new things for you and so much more you essentially enslave them if you choose to do so but you don't have to if you want to be a good person <laughs> you don't have to but essentially your base kind of turns into this automation system for you when you use these power wells to help assist you in crafting things and doing things and building things and growing food and cooking and so on and so forth but while you're utilizing your pals to capture and build your base you're also gaining xp where you can then level up to unlock new technology that you can then add to your base as well as building your strength to yourself as well as your pals leveling up yourself and your pals is kind of two different elements to things you need to rank up and then throughout the map there is dungeons and merchants and bosses where you progress the game and you discover new pals and new worlds and all kinds of different things to discover and it's it's pretty cool I, I love an open world game that is very filled and for an early access game that has a lot to it so let's get into some of the things that i like i am someone who's very lukewarm to survival games i'm not a massive fan of survival but i also don't dislike them i can appreciate a great one and if i do like it i will beat it i loved sons of the forest for example that was a game that I thought was really well done. It wanted me to explore the world and see everything that there is to it. And this is kind of a game, even though I don't say I don't want to say it's similar, but it's a game that it's a survival game that makes me want to fall in love and keep on playing because I'm very, like I said, hit or miss on survival games. Sometimes I want to keep on playing and have fun playing like I did with Grounded, for example, but others I just kind of get tired of and I don't want to do it anymore. But Power World is one of those that has me hooked. The thing I like the most about this game is how quickly you can start getting automated which is something that you don't really see or at least i haven't seen in a survival game before especially with how quick you can do it a lot of the times the games that do allow some sort of automation it's either not to the extent of what you can do in power world and if you can do it to the extent of power world it's usually very late late into the game towards the end game most survival games i've played like i said you just some of them don't even have them at all no automation system at all you kind of have to do it yourself the amount of variety of pals you can capture and fight is very good in my opinion. It's a lot of variety in what you can do in this game. It keeps you on the grind to capture as many as you can, just so you can see their abilities and their traits and how they can help you. I feel that the level progression is timed just right in my opinion. It's very satisfying to level up. It's not too slow or too fast. I think it's just kind of right enough to keep me entertained and playing for a long time. I don't know the exact time of length for this game to complete because I'm about 25 hours in, but if I had to guess, it's probably going to be close to 50 to 70 hours to probably get max level as of right now during this early access period. The size of the map is massive and it's diverse. It has a wide variety of landscapes which give you a unique reason to why you should go to each one and each area each different environment has the different pals that cater to that just like you see in pokemon i enjoy that i have the feeling that i don't have to be stuck i don't have to be stuck doing one specific thing until i move on i can have this outsourcing essentially for me to do what i want to do and just roam around and explore and see and try to capture these new different things i don't feel like i'm capped or pigeonholed into this area because of my level or i need to get this specific thing yes i can't go and capture these specific areas that are very high level but i can still go there and do that and see it and map out and kind of 
open up the entire map so I can get a game plan of what you want to do because the game really caters itself to doing whatever you want to do and making sure that you can go wherever you want to even if you're not exactly ready for it yet. So I enjoy that a lot. Outside of the game itself, the devs have been very, very, very quick on releasing patches for the game. It's already, they've already handled a bunch of bug fixes. And speaking of bugs, from my personal experience, I found the game to run pretty smoothly with no glaring issues. Just minor things here and there, like getting stuck on rocks or trees or whatever, but nothing game breaking as of right now. And I'm sure even as I'm speaking about this, they probably already fixed a lot of that. So the only thing that I've noticed was that sometimes the frame rate, I at first, when I first loaded up the game, I was getting a lot higher frame rate than what I'm getting now post updates. But like I said, this is early access. And for the most part, everything seems to be running smooth. Like there's a little hiccups here and there, but it's an early access. Not like some early access where they just essentially give you a demo. This is feels like a pretty full fledged game that you're giving you here. Um, so now I want to talk into the future of Power Worlds. The devs have now released an early access roadmap of what to expect in the coming year to two years. There's no exact timeline on what they're going to do, but they kind of roughly give you an idea of when to expect things. There's going to be adding things like PVP, which I think is going to be really interesting. Raid bosses, which I'm actually really excited for. That's going to be awesome. And Steam and Xbox crossplay, which I think was something Look, it's early access, so I understand, but I feel like that was something that should have been implemented before the release of the game. There's going to be new islands, new pals, bosses, technology, and then obviously many more technical fixes. So the ones that stick out to me the most is the PvP. That's going to be really interesting. I hope you don't always have to do PvP. I hope there's maybe just some certain servers you can join that are public that just do PvP because there is a lot to build and it'd be kind of annoying if you just lose all because, but some people love that kind of gameplay style. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I do. I can admire the reason why somebody played it. I'll probably play it a little bit myself. Raid bosses, if, somebody, if it's anything kind of like Destiny where it's solving puzzles or doing these things to kind of get to the end and unlock that chest that has all that loot, I'm all for that. I'm actually really excited to see what they do. I hope it's a very elaborate raids that take a while. You maybe need multiple people to do because those are always the most fun in my opinion. And the new islands, we'll see uh, what they do. Um, hopefully new environments, maybe like a rainforest and jungle, something like that would be really interesting. And then obviously pals and bosses that cater towards that. But yeah, this all just sounds amazing. This makes me feel very confident in the future of this game. It's not just gonna be in a flash in the pan, in my opinion. I know some people think that when a game takes off, it's just gonna die. These are one of those where this is a hole that was desperately needed to be filled by a lot of people and especially by Pokemon fans who Nintendo's pretty, pretty much neglected the entire PC fan base and a lot of guys that grew up playing Pokemon and loved it maybe don't play Nintendo as much anymore or don't play Pokemon games as more or if they do they're not a huge fan of the ones that have come out I've I haven't played the new ones I was never a huge Pokemon guy but from what I'm understanding and some of the reviews that I've watched that it was very underwhelming for the the most recent one and this is kind of fulfilling that need that people wanted out of an open world Pokemon game. And I think because of that and the fact that it's on multiple platforms, you're going to it's just going to stick around. And especially once you add the PVP elements and all that stuff, once you add PVP and it's successful, it's doing something unique that isn't done on PC or Xbox yet. I just think that's a recipe for success and it's going to last for a long time, especially with how much there is to do in this game. It's not like a quick arcadey game kind of like what you had with among us or fall guys even though those games are still played to this day but obviously they're not to the level what they were when they were at least this is something that there's a little bit more involved there's a little bit more into it and i can see this being kind of an everlasting game and providing raid bosses for end game content can help keep the more casual co-op players and solo players entertained for ones that don't want to go into pvp if the devs can find a way to perfectly blend these genres and do it in in a way that keeps people entertained and keeps them playing i think it's going to be successful all in all i believe this game is going to have the staying power to stay alive especially since they're bringing an experience that pokemon fans haven't been ha getting and they've been wanting out of what they thought a hypothetical open world pokemon game would be but let me know if you're enjoying power world and if it will be here for a long time and if you haven't done so already please like and subscribe to the content if you want to see more gaming discussions reviews news so on and so forth 
and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody.